Hello folks, this is William, also known as Warden Wolf, and I'm going to be putting together a quick video tonight showing how you can play Magic the Gathering online with your friends. And I don't mean Magic the Gathering online as in the official video game, but Magic the Gathering, the paper version, online through something like Tapped Out or Moxfield in combination with OBS and Discord in order to play with your friends when you can't actually get together physically in meat space for playing on Friday Night Magic or whenever else you might get together like normal. This season kind of sucks for that, so my friends and I uh, in our playgroup have found a way around this that's pretty innovative. I know a lot of people use webcams and point them down at their playmat or something like that, and you can make those things work, but you often deal with glare and uh, all sorts of weird issues having to rotate webcams around or mirror things and and complexities that you actually don't have to deal with if you don't want to by using this trick. So there's a few steps to it. I'm going to try and walk you through it all pretty quickly here, but I'm also going to try and do this in one take, so I apologize if I backtrack or stutter or mix something up. Please bear with me. So our eventual goal, and I've already got this set up and been using this for about a month now and tapped out, is something like this where I have a window that you can see over here where I can play. I can see my hand, my library, graveyard, etc. But in Discord, all that my opponents will see is the play field. They don't have to see my hand. They can, though, see my life total, how many cards I have in hand in library. And if you want, if you have a webcam, you can throw up a little picture of yourself in the corner as well to make it a little more personable. So I want to show you how we get to that point and to do it, I'm actually going to use Moxfield, which is a website I wasn't aware of until last week. One of my friends pointed it out to me, and he really likes it better than Tapped Out, but it should work equally well for either of these. And just to give you a little background while I'm closing things down here, both of those are websites primarily designed to let you do deck building and tracking your decks and planning things. And they work great for that, but they also both have playtest features. And what we're basically doing is using the playtest feature as a way of showing a virtual game board, uh, virtual desktop, virtual playmat, whatever you want to call it, instead of trying to film one in paper. So the way we're going to go about this, I'm going to go ahead and close out this window so you can kind of see it from the ground up. What you need to have is an account created on either Moxfield or tapped out with a deck built and all of that, whatever you want to be playing with. And then you're also going to need um, in this case, Chrome as a web browser, it might work with others, but in this case, I know Chrome works. And one thing you have to make sure and do for this feature, uh, the way we're gonna have this set up to work is in settings, you've got to go in and look for hardware acceleration. And you wanna turn this off. The hardware acceleration feature will keep OBS from doing the trick that we need it to be able to do. So you wanna make sure you turn that off and it'll probably require a restart of Chrome and then you also need to have OBS installed, specifically OBS Studio, um, which is the newer version of OBS. Again, there might be other ways to do this, but this is the one that I figured out and, and know how to do. So in OBS, which is a free program, you want to go in here into Scenes and add a scene. We call this Moxfield. Click OK. And then what you want to do over here in Sources is add a window capture. And I'm going to call this Mox Field in Chrome. You can call it whatever you want, of course. And then it will grab a window and you can pick what you want it to be here. And in this case, I'm going to pick my Chrome EXE window. Capture method automatic, that's all fine. And then this is where things start to get a little tricky. So far that should have been pretty straightforward, but here some of this is going to depend very much on your resolution, your monitor setup, because what we're going to do is kind of massage the width of the window and the height of the window so that we can get the entire play field in view without having things like the hand and whatnot. Um, and in looking at Moxfield, this is actually the first time I've used Moxfield. I just threw in a deck here. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit, I think, because the text on this is pretty small. So for my screen resolution, I think I want it to be about this big. This is a, I have a 3440 by 1440 ultra widescreen monitor here. So again, this, your mileage is gonna vary depending on what exactly you're doing. But this, uh, what was that? 
100 and no 200 percent zoom is what i needed to get to on mox field to get this to work i don't remember what zoom i'm using on tapped out but you may well need to zoom in a little bit to make sure that you can read the text on your cards and then what we're going to want to do over here in this view is actually adjust how big this is you can kind of click and drag these uh these red squares in the corners you want to do that the corners to make sure that you're expanding it and keeping the aspect ratio the same but what we want to do is remove the bottom section and also remove the top we don't need it to say all this stuff we want to make sure the life totals are visible and we want to make sure our hand size is visible. We don't want our other players to be able to see our hand, but they should know how many cards are in it, how many cards are in our graveyard, that sort of thing. So this actually looks about perfect. You could probably even massage this further if you wanted to try and get rid of the buttons here. You don't really need those to be visible to your opponents. But at this point, I'm actually, I think, going to be pretty happy with this as it is right there. So what that's going to do is give you the right aspect ratio and everything so you know the amount of space that's being shown here in your web browser is what you're going to want to show to your friends. And then what we're going to do as the next step, you could optionally, by the way, in here, add in a webcam or something like that if you wanted to. I'm not going to be messing with that right now. That's pretty easy to do in OBS if you're familiar with it. Um, but what we're going to end up doing is locking that in and then and this is the tricky part because right now we could broadcast that but we're not trying to broadcast it we actually want to share it in discord so what we're going to do is right click on here and hit windowed projector preview that's going to give us a window that is literally just this view instead of this whole view because right now if we went to discord and shared this window people would see our hand and everything in the aspect ratio wouldn't be right but now what we do is get this, and then we want to make this as high resolution as possible. So I like sticking it so it's in line with the previous window there. And then again, just dragging and opening this up to be about the same size so that it's as nice and high resolution as possible. And it should be pretty close. Uh, you can kind of look at the text and judge. It should be roughly the same size as the text in the original window behind it. And you also want to make sure that there's no extra wasted black space around the edges. So now that we've got that, this window projector preview, now what we can do is go back to Discord, go to turn on screen share, go to application window, and select specifically the windowed projector preview, and click share. And now that is what our opponents will see. But something doesn't look quite right here, does it? We're missing, we're getting more at the top than we're supposed to be. That's a little bit weird. We're getting more at the top and we're missing the text at the bottom, if you note there. So something's a little bit off in OBS. But the nice thing is we can actually just go adjust that. Let's move OBS over to this side so we can see better. And we can play around with things. And that's Kind of what you have to do especially the first time through is just be willing to play around with things a little bit until you get them exactly the way you want why is this not adjusting at all that is a fantastic question this is not changing what's going on over here in the least is it oh it's showing what's over here on this side see it's easy to make little mistakes. I bet what I have going on is just this. I forgot to actually start that, so I need to actually transition to that view. So in uh, in OBS, you can select the view you want here and then click transition, or if you've set it up ahead of time, you can make it so you can double click. That's not the default behavior, um, but it will work if you set it up ahead of time that way. But I just had forgotten to actually transition to that being an active output. So now it is active over there. You can see that's exactly what we want. They can see the life total and stuff at the top. They can see information about hand and library at the bottom. And then for actually playing with your friends, what you're going to want to do is, if everyone's doing this, use pop out on Discord. So on one half of your monitor, you're going to have the Discord view and it would normally show all of your different 
views here, and other people can be playing just with webcams if they prefer, but you have all the views visible there. And then on this side, you open up your actual window and you're able to play. They can see your cursor. They can see as you move around and do stuff. You can play cards, etc. And it's a little tricky because the resolution is not fantastic. I think Discord by default maxes out at 720p maybe. Um, and it sometimes seems like it's even lower quality than that. But it should be enough that they can get a general idea of what's going on. And if they need more information, in Moxfield, you just hover over the card and then it pulls it up and makes it much more easy to read. There's a similar thing you can do in Tapped Out as well. I think you double click on a card and Tapped Out, something like that to bring up a zoomed in view. So people, if they need to be reminded what a specific card does, you can do that. And then you have all the controls in here that are necessary to really play the game. You can draw, go to next turn, shuffle, add tokens, search for specific cards, like if you're tutoring, all that sort of stuff. You do have to trust your friends a little bit because they can't see. You could have done some trickiness in terms of looking through your library before you started the screen share or something. So please don't use this to cheat. I discourage that strongly. And I encourage playing with people that you trust anyway, because there's also ways to cheat in paper. So really, this isn't necessarily going to be great for a pickup game. But if you're playing with a group of friends that you already know and trust, it should work out really well. Um, the only thing that I would give as a caution is one time I've had this happen on one game out of probably a dozen or more that we've played this way. Something in Tapped Out froze up to where I couldn't move cards around anymore. So what I did on my end was took a screenshot and then I was able to reconstruct my hand and my board state and then shuffle my library and continue playing. That's something you, of course, usually don't have to deal with in paper, but I could see that happening if a table got tipped over or something. Um, anyhow, I hope this was helpful and I hope this wasn't too long. I apologize if it was. And if you have any questions, good luck.